Well, good morning. Good morning. This is the last Sunday of Lent. Woo! Right? No? Okay. Easter is right around the corner, but let's not rush. <laughs> In this passage from John, we get the uh, Jesus' last public discourse. This is kind of his public farewell to the crowd. He has another final discourse later, but that one is only for the disciples. And here we get the lovely image of the grains of wheat dying in the soil and returning to life as wheat. Now, they didn't have a lot of advanced science back then, so they didn't realize that seeds are not actually dead, but the analogy still holds up either way. Here, Jesus must die like the seed, rise again like the wheat, and then ascend, thus bearing fruit. And Jesus is looking ahead here, past his death, to prepare the people for his return. Because death is something that they all understand. It's something that we all understand, because we live with death all the time, every day. It's the resurrection and the ascension that are kind of the harder things to grasp. But Jesus is not only talking about his resurrection. He's giving here a model of discipleship. In order to form a relationship with God, which is one of the big themes of John, we have to leave behind the things, the habits, etc., that are detrimental to us and embrace the goodness that God offers through Jesus. We are to embrace this love, the love of ourselves, the love of God, the love of neighbor that Jesus is always talking about. And this is what Lent is about nowadays. It used to be the time when converts to the faith were instructed about Christianity and then baptized on Easter. But over time, this has changed. So we are always looking forward towards Easter, but let's take a moment to look back on Lent. So the other week I was in the deli, and it was a Friday, and there was a lady in front of me buying a stack of tuna subs. And I thought, nobody likes tuna that much, and they're going to buy all those tuna subs. But then she said loudly three times, that she was being good for Lent. Now, I'm not judging this lady's intentions or anything. I don't know her, so I'll just tell you that. But I'm using this example to illustrate a point. In Lent, we are supposed to give up things or take on things that bring us closer to God, to be in a closer relationship to God, to see Jesus so if giving up meat on Fridays does that for a person, that is great. More power to that person, I say. Personally, it does nothing for me. So when I got up to the counter, I ordered my extra large BLT. And that is also okay. So today the Greeks come to Philip. And they say that they want to see Jesus. They don't want to ask Philip, about Jesus, or hear a story about Jesus, they want to see Jesus for themselves. And in a way, that is what we are all doing. That's what we all want. We want to experience God, to experience the holy, or a greater power, whatever name you want to use for it. And we often lament that people don't come to church anymore, because there isn't a sense of duty to come to church anymore, right? It's not like the 1950s. That's true. Attendance, <clears throat> excuse me, attendance going down, however, doesn't really indicate that there are less believers in the world. It just shows us that less people feel obligated to get up on Sundays and come here. Some people find God by coming here, and they see God in the music, or in the beautiful windows, or in the architecture. 
Some people see God in the liturgy, in the bread and wine, maybe even in the sermon? No? All right. Darn it. Well, some people don't see God in church at all, but rather in a beautiful tree or in meditation or yoga or volunteering at an animal shelter or at the symphony. Some people see God in all things, which must be an amazing life. All of these things are good. The whole point is that we are to seek God in our lives and form a relationship. And that is what Lent is about. To give up something or to study or to focus ourselves into a relationship with God. For me, I'll give you an example. Besides the liturgy here, I encounter God a lot when I study, when I read, and in my conversations with people out in the world. And some things to consider for yourselves for homework is where do you all encounter God the most in your lives? And how did you show this during Lent this year? I'm not going to quiz you, but something for you to think about. Because the point of following Jesus is to have a relationship with God so we can all be drawn deeper into the kingdom of God through our love, our love for our neighbors and our service and our sacrifice on behalf of other people. Jesus came to show God's strength in the vulnerable and God's power in what seems to be weak, God's justice through love and mercy and forgiveness. And that's the kind of life and love that we're supposed to continue living out now. So today, Jesus is not only referring to his death on the cross. He's looking ahead, far, far ahead. He says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And this is for us. Jesus draws us to himself, into a relationship with God. And we are to do the same thing for others. Through us and our lives with God and our example of living the love of God, others may also see God and be drawn into a relationship. This is what a life of discipleship is, one that reaches far beyond Jesus' death. So the grain seed dies, but then it grows anew and bears much fruit. And we are the bearers of this fruit here on the earth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.